Hello from the Crystal Coast. This is Pastor Kevin. It's Tuesday, September the 28th. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about this idea of discipleship. Um, what it means to be a disciple. That's one of the steps on our, uh, what we've identified as our discipleship pathway, just clear steps for people to say, okay, here's where I am in my journey. Connect to God in worship. Become like Jesus in a Bible study group. Serve like Jesus on a ministry team. Share Jesus out in, out in the community. Those are the steps that we are encouraging people to take. So today, let's talk a little bit, think a little bit about uh, particularly the second, second step. Become like Jesus in a Bible study group. And here are the questions I want to ask today. Is knowledge the same as maturity? In your spiritual life. In other words, if you know more about God, if you know more of the Bible, does that automatically mean that you are growing in your spiritual maturity? Does knowledge inevitably lead to maturity in the spiritual life? <clears throat> I think if you ask that question of people who've been in church a long time, they would say, well, absolutely. I mean, that's why we go to Bible study groups. That's why we engage in Bible studies. That's why we read the Bible, because the more we know about it, the more spiritually mature we're going to be. Is that always the case? Uh, and so here's the reason why I asked the question. Paul was talking to the church in Corinth, people who, who were really believed. They really believed. They were spiritually mature. And yet, when you read the letters that he wrote them, they were messed up. That was a messed up church. And he's writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, particularly about the issue of eating meat that's been offered to idols. In Corinth, they had these, they had these temples to these false gods. People would come and they'd offer a sacrifice. They'd take the sacrifice out the back door of the temple and, and put it on display in a meat market. People would go by and buy it. They're, they're eating meat offered to idols and and. And a lot of people were kind of wrapped around the axle about that. Can you do that? Can we do that? <clears throat> and so Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1. Now concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. That, In other words, that was kind of the standard line in the church in Corinth. Well, we all know that that's not a, that's not a thing. These gods are not real. And then Paul says this. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Knowledge puffs up, love builds up. In other words, knowledge, uh, instead of producing spiritual maturity in, in us, it actually produces spiritual pride in us, which is the opposite of spiritual maturity. Love, on the other hand, it builds us up, and it, and it builds others up through us. So just a couple of notes of encouragement to you today. The first one is this. Focus on making disciples. Make that your focus. Instead of focusing on being a disciple, focus on making disciples. Because here's the reality. And, and I suspect a lot of you have experienced this. The time that you grew the most in your faith, the time that you experienced the greatest amount of spiritual growth in your life, was probably about the same time that you started focusing on investing in others, building up others, helping others grow in their faith. Focus on making disciples, and you'll actually grow in your own discipleship. Here's a second. Leverage your own spiritual growth to impact the lives of those who aren't disciples. <clears throat> in other words, take the maturity that you're experiencing and make sure that it's focused on actually reaching out to others. Discipleship and evangelism are, are connected. They, they, they are uh, eternally connected. Uh, and so if you, you say, well, I, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus. If you're not reaching out, you better really think about your own, your own discipleship. Leverage your spiritual growth to impact the lives of those who aren't disciples. Here's the third thing. Shoot for progress, not perfection. Shoot for progress. <clears throat> because again, I, this is, um, this is what we experience in our, our own Christian life. We may find ourselves making some progress and all of a sudden we're, we, we take a step or two back in one area 
then we make some progress in another area, and then we take a step back in one area. And if our focus is on perfection, we're going to be so discouraged that we're we're going to give up. We're going to give up the process. Focus on the progress that you are making, and realize that you know things are going to be things are not going to be as clear cut as we would like for them to be. Our discipleship is not is not linear. It's not a straight line. It is a roller coaster of up and down in our spiritual maturity. Here's number four. Don't hold new disciples to the same standard as you hold mature disciples. Uh, in, in the same way, we don't hold preschoolers to the same standard that we hold high schoolers. We just, the way preschoolers respond in a certain situation, well, we're going to cut them a whole lot more slack than we would high schoolers. If they responded in the same way as preschoolers, yeah, we're going to... We're going to be a whole lot more intentional about addressing that in the life of a high schooler than we would be in a preschooler. So don't hold new disciples to the same standard as you hold mature disciples. And, and, and here's an implication of that. <clears throat> in a church where you are seeing people come to faith, new believers, oh, it's going to be messy. They're going to still be dealing with things. They're going to still be dealing with issues in their life that they, that they don't quite understand they need to be growing out of yet and so we need to we need to be aware of that and we need to give allowance for that <clears throat> here's uh, here's number five spiritual growth takes time and sometimes it requires that we go over the same ground that we've already gained and, and I, I talked about that just a, just a minute ago again this progress that we're making it's not like you know, once I've gotten to, I've gotten to this point, I don't ever have to worry about you know having to redo something in my spiritual life. That's just that's just not reality. And then finally, number six, if you want something to measure, measure your love for the world that God loves, because love is the motivation for both our uh, discipleship, becoming like Jesus and our evangelism, sharing Jesus with others. So here's my question of the day for you. Where are you in your discipleship? Where, where are you? And what are you measuring? What kind of progress are you making? How do you need to really focus on investing in others, making disciples in others, to begin to see real significant growth in your own uh, spiritual maturity? Let me pray for you today. Father, thank you for what you are up to in our lives and for the knowledge that we know that we're going to be just like Jesus. One day we're going to be just like him. And it's our prayer that you would help us in our own development of our, of our faith to be more like Jesus every day so that we can make a greater impact on those around us while we have the opportunity. That's our desire. And that's our prayer this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I want to mention a couple of things to you today before I let you go. Uh, this year's annual, in fact, it's the, I believe it's the 29th annual New Bern Life Chain event uh, to address the issue of abortion, abortion in our community is happening uh, this coming Sunday, October the 3rd, from 2.15 to 3.30, from 2.15 to 3.30, at MLK Boulevard at the mall in New Bern. Uh, from the mall to IHOP on both sides of the highway, you can go and be a part of this life chain and ask God to continue to move to change people's hearts, particularly regarding the issue of, of abortion. So that's this Sunday, Sunday afternoon from 2.15 to 3. 30, the New Bern Life Chain. And then <clears throat> I want to remind you, we got a new ministry starting up in January for our friends with special needs. And there's going to be a leader helper training. It's scheduled for this Saturday, October the 2nd. It'll start at 9 in the morning, go from 9 until noon. From 9 to noon, this leader helper training for special needs ministry. 
lunch is going to be provided for you. If you're interested in being a part of that training, you need to contact Kelly Miller. Kelly Miller, and you can reach her. Her email is ke Miller, K E Miller, M I L L E R, 1119. K E Miller, 1119 at gmail.com. And so, as God stirs your heart to be a part of that, I hope you'll take advantage of that training that's coming up uh, this coming Saturday. And so, let me encourage you again today. Let's come together, keep moving together in the passionate pursuit of the next generation.